In this tutorial, we will learn how to make a simple horror game in Unity. You can use this video as the starting block for a much larger project. By the end, you'll control a chubby priest wielding a flashlight that reveals hidden nightmares. This mechanic and effect can be used in all sorts of interesting ways to create jump scares and tension. As always, the star and end project files can be found over at the Game Dev Brotherhood. If you want to take your game dev skills to the next level alongside a passionate community, we really hope you join us. You'll find courses on how to make games, live classes where you can ask questions directly to Liam and I, monthly game jams and more. The link is in the description and there's even a seven days free trial so you have nothing to lose in at least giving it a shot. So with the project files downloaded I have a bunch of sprites I can use to map out a small world. I'll begin by adding some clouds to a background layer in my unity scene and then add some blank fields and tombstones on top of that. I can also add gnarly roots and crooked trees to the foreground. Making silhouette style art like this is really simple and I go over it in much more detail inside this tutorial, which you can also find on the channel. Next, I'll add my little priest and add the priest script to him so he can move left and right. Now I'm going to create a new 2D spotlight and place it somewhere to the left of my scene so the other half is hidden in darkness. If I add my creature to the scene, I now want to add the mask shader inside this empty slot in the inspector. Shout out to Owen Senior, the creator of Wibbly Witches, for helping me make this. However, you'll notice that I can't see the creature anymore. This is because we need to make our 2D spotlight completely red. Now we can see the creature, but the rest of the scene is tinted in red, which looks a bit odd. So we can select all our sprites in our scene and give them the BTP light material. This way they're impacted by the light intensity, but not the light's color. And we can now see how the creature appears and vanishes based on whether or not he's in the light. This becomes even more apparent in a new scene. You can also see the cool distortion effect, which adds to the spooky spirit-like quality of the monster. Cool note, if you make another spotlight and this time make it completely blue, this will hide sprites with the mask shader. You might come up with some interesting gameplay ideas based on this. Now back in our initial scene, if you wanted to add some color tint, you could add a soft cone or circle shape to the scene, give it a high order in layer, as well as the light color material, then change the color to whatever you like. This replaces the color tints you would get from the lights, since those are now used to reveal or hide creatures. Now we can create another 2D light, and instead of being a spotlight, we'll change it to sprites. This way we have complete control over the shape of our light. I'll give it this cone shape. I'll then make sure to change the color to red so that it allows us to reveal creatures in the dark. I'll add the reveal cone script to it, which simply rotates the cone to face the mouse cursor. This way our priest can now walk around and also controls a beam of light that reveals monsters in the dark. Speaking of monsters, I'll create a little animation for our beast that makes him squash and stretch a little and switch between these two sprites. Then I'll add the monster script to it, which simply gets it moving towards the player. I can now move the beast somewhere to the right, and now we have a mini horror experience. Hopefully you can see the potential of this mask shader. I'm sure it can be used in all sorts of creative ways, from revealing hidden secrets, to piercing through the gloom and protecting lonely travelers in the dark. Perhaps the player must switch between a shotgun and this revealing lantern, alternating between looking for creatures, then fumbling for his weapon and shooting in the dark, hoping he didn't miss. Guys, if you enjoyed this little tutorial, consider joining the Game Dev Brotherhood. Again, there's a seven days free trial and you'll find the project files, Game Dev courses, live classes and a passionate community of indie game creators. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, it's a huge support guys, and yeah, see you real soon. Cheers.